no idea. <sighs> okay, let me go back over here and just happen to see if maybe, just maybe it's working. I have no clue, you guys, what happened. But I just turned off a little of this and a little of that and a little of this, a little of that. So that's about the tenth time I'm trying to go live, it looks like. I think it's working. Oh my gosh. I'm going to die. Oh, hi, Chow. Yeah, I think this is the right one. Thanks, Tina. Oh my gosh, this is hard. Let me look and see. Tammy just messaged me. <laughs> she says, where am I? You see me now. Can you see me? Can you see me now? <laughs> this. Oh. Anyways, I could hear you guys. See me. Let's see if Tammy just texted me again. Yes, she sees me. Oh my gosh, you guys, that's nerve wracking. Let me tell you, I have all these contraptions and buttons around me. I wish you could see. Well, this is the one that's driving. Whoa, I'll probably knock you offline if I pick this up. This is the one that's driving everything. This thing right here. And I have to handle all this stuff. But then I have one, two, three other cameras. And it just, sometimes it just gets difficult. But I don't think it was my fault. I think it was freaking YouTube. Anyway. All right, we're here, I think. Let me see if I can find you guys on here so I can see the chat. Yay! Hey, D. Yeah, everybody's coming back. Yippee. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <sighs> so, anyway, okay, I do need a swig of my coffee. Sippy, sippy, as Ken Beers would say. Hey, Stephanie. Yeah, it's all good. Whew. Okay. So how many of you have ever done magnets before? I have not, but it was a lot of fun. Um, and I'm, like I said, I'm thinking that maybe we could use magnets for uh, stickers. I, well, I know, not actually, no. We can use the same technique for stickers uh, that I'm going to show you how to do with the magnets. And if you have an older kid or a grandkid or something, I feel like I have something right on my lip. <laughs> you can, mm, what have I got on my lip? Oh, well. And you can um, make them something for their locker if they have school lockers or something like that. Anyway, whew, I'm a little discombobulated just for a few minutes. I'll get back on track. So what we're going to do today is you're going to learn how to do an offset again. And for those of you who have crickets, you can do this and not have the offset on it if you don't want to. But again, if you have the business edition, you can easily put an offset on your stickers or on your magnets. And I just think it looks a lot nicer. But, you know, you can still do it without. So you haven't done any stickers or, I mean, any magnets, Tammy? Okay. So let me look back here for a second, see if you guys... Tammy was working on it. Yay! Okay. All right, so let me move some of this stuff. I got too much junk. Okay. So, let's see. First, I'm just going to show you, oh gosh, I'm having issues, I don't know. I'm going to show you, let's make sure this is working. All right, there is something that's not working, and that is the sharing of my screen. So, hang on just a second and let me restart that again really quickly so you'll be able to see my uh, Cameo or my Silhouette software. So I'm restarting this, so you'll be able to see that. And I gotta add this camera in, so this is like the fourth. Hmm, turn it off. Okay, okay. I'll turn it back on. Keep your fingers crossed again, you guys. Because otherwise, if I can't get this camera connected, we, you won't be able to see what I'm doing. Oh, Tina, so how many Valentines do you have to make then? Quite a few? Seeing screen. You can see my screen? No, what you're probably seeing is this down here, right? Because I don't think you can see my screen because that camera just doesn't want to seem to connect. So I'm going to go off one more time and turn this off. Try one more time. Inputs. Okay, now I think it's going to work. Do this. There we go. Okay, that is not connecting. 
Oh, well, that's trying to connect. Let's look down here at my table, and I'll show you what all I have right here. 24 for his class. Tina, you have to make 24 and 18 for daycare. Wow, that's a lot of cards you got to make. So anyway, this is what I'm going to work on today from my sister, Jean Frida. She went, I think she bought these things from Hobby Lobby. I should have saved the packaging when I opened it yesterday. But I think she got it from Hobby Lobby. I do have a link down below for you if you should want to purchase this. Just get any dry erase board if you want to do this. Or just use your refrigerator as your metal surface. But you'll know that the dry erase board is a magnet if, you know, a magnetizer will work if there happens to be a magnet attached to it. Yes, you don't see the software screen, but you do see my stuff here, right, Tammy, on my desktop? That's what I'm hoping you see right now. Yeah, the software screen, oh, it's working now. Okay, cool, finally connected. Okay, good. All right, we're good. All right, so this is what we're going to be using. And the magnet material that I use is this. This is what she bought me, it's the Avery brand. Okay, I imagine any brand would work, but I can vouch for this one. I know this one works in my computer, or in my printer, I should say. So this is what it looks like. It's really pretty thin. So for little tiny kids, this might be a little bit hard for them to manipulate these. They have to kind of pinch them together to pick them up to move them. But they're super cute. Um, and I am going to cut this on my Cameo. You can do the exact same thing on your Cricut machine. What I was doing, though, was I was using this older mat, and it wasn't sticky enough yesterday, and I'm worried about it right now as well. So what I learned to do was to use something like this sulky, sulky K, what's it called? Sulky, sulky, let me get rid of this. So you're seeing this, right? Yeah, the sulky, sulky K2, KK2000. And what you do is you take tape and you tape off the edges because you don't want them where your rollers go to be sticky. And then you can spray this on here and it'll make your mats last a lot longer. Before I decided to do that, I did get out this mat. Then this one's called a um, Strong Tack. Oh my gosh, forget about it, you guys. Don't use this. I hope you can hear me okay. Let me move my mic over a little bit. Don't use this. The reason I say that is I put my magnetic stuff on here and I couldn't even hardly get it off. When I finally ripped it off, the magnet was actually coming apart from the paper that is really, really, really well adhered. So this thing is so strong, don't use it for this. So just go back to your regular tack mat, I guess. And if yours isn't tacky enough, again, let me see, Tammy just said something. So let me make sure that she can hear and see. Uh, yes, we see you. Okay. And you see exactly what I need you to see. Yes, you can see me. Okay, cool. Okay. So I am just going to spray a little bit more on here. You have to shake this up, and I'm going to be careful not to get it on the edges. I'm just going to, I'll do that in a minute. First, we'll go back up to my screen, and I'll show you what's going to happen first. So this is working. Okay, let's get the sill. Uh-oh, what did she say? Wait, hang on one more sec. Okay, cool. All right. So let me go back up here to Silhouette. Okay. And here you are at Silhouette with me. All righty. So this is what I did yesterday, just as a trial, because I didn't want you guys to have to sit around while I messed around trying to figure all this jazz out, because it's new to me, right? So I did do this one yesterday, but I'm going to show you how to do this from the start to the begin to the end right now. So the first thing I did was I actually bought these little guys because I thought they were really, really cute. And I didn't want to spend my time showing you how to make these. Even though you can make your own SVGs, you can do this yourself. The object of today's class is just to show you how to get these prepared to make magnets. So I'm going to move these guys off to the side. This is one thing I like about this program too. I can move those way over there as opposed to Cricut Design Space. We don't have all this workspace. Um, as you'll notice, I've already turned on my registration marks. If you're using a Cameo and you're not sure how to do that, you come over here to the page setup panel up here on the upper right to open it. And the first one right here this is the page setup, and this is what has, I've decided I'm using, well, that magnetic 
paper and it's eight and a half by 11. So that's exactly how this sheet is set up. So if you look over here, it says Auto Cameo, the cutting mat. I'm using an Auto Cameo cutting mat. Uh, for my media size though, and that's the material that I'm using, I'm using letter. So I used this drop down and went to letter. Ordinarily it's on Auto 12 by 12, which is the Cameo size, or a Cricut, but I'm gonna change it to letter, looks like that. Okay, so there we go. And then to turn on these registration marks, so just like for Cricut, you have registration marks when you're doing print and cut. There are registration marks here as well. So you come over to the third button over. And if you're not sure which one, just hover over them and it'll tell you. Ah, so this one should say registration marks. So I just click on that. And right now I have them on usually when you open up the program they are off so you see there's no lines on so i'm going to turn on the registration marks and there we go the other thing that you may notice is there there are these lines here and i can't put my print and cuts outside of these lines so the way i turn those on is just this is just a quick refresher for people that do use the cameo uh, you just come down here first on the page setup panel and then just come down here and put these check marks on. Watch, there are no red lines or lines here. As soon as I put the lines on, puts the cut and the print border on. So I'm really in concerned about the cut border. Okay, so enough of that. Let's get down to business. So let's see, the first thing that I did, whoopsie, was not that, was this. I came to this uh, page right here and I have a link for it for you down below if you want to get these exact same animals. You don't have to. You can find your own. You can make your own, whatever. But if you want to use these same animals, I think they're adorable. So this will be the link of where you get them. All you have to do is add them to your cart and then download them. So I've already done that. And then let me still have to move a few of these things out of the way. Okay. So now I'm going to go to... Um, file up here on the upper left hand corner and I'm going to say merge and okay it's already opening to what I need so notice I always save things in my download folder and I actually save this one in a Jean Frieda folder since she's the one that you know sent me the supplies so that I would do this and came up with the project which I love because I never would do some of these things or outside of my comfort zone so it gives me a chance to try new stuff and it's kind of like getting a kit. But anyway, here they all are. And they're PNGs, I think. Yes, if I hover over them, you see it tells what kind of file they are. But these work just right. So I'm going to click on, I'll just do two of them today, just to do something quick for you. Uh, I'll do the turtle, maybe. What should I do? Turtle. Okay, there's the turtle, and maybe I'll also do, what is that a hedgehog? I'm going to merge, or, yeah, I guess it's a hedgehog, not a porcupine. <laughs> the hedgehog. Okay. Or, yeah, I'll do the hedgehog. Okay. So I'm just going to do these two today, just so you see how to do it. So obviously they came in way too big for this. So what I did was I decided whatever dimension was the largest on the samples that I made, I decided to make the largest dimension three inches. So to do that, all I did was come up, click on one, come up here and lock the lock up here, and then look at both of these, the width and the height, which one's bigger, the width, I made that three inches. Hit three and enter, and that changed the height automatically. So he's good right there. Then the next thing I did was I came, oh, but you know what, you guys? This isn't gonna work. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself and watch because I want to put an offset around him. And if I go over here and click on him and come over here to the offset panel, and this is the this is one of the dream parts of this program that those of you who just use Design Space, you'll want this program just, just for this, but there's so much you can do. But if I go to the offset panel and try to offset this uh, hedgehog, or what is he? Is, I don't know, somebody tell me, what is it? I don't know, hedgehog, I guess. And I come up here and I click on offset. Did you see what that did? It didn't offset him. 
it offset the square that was around him. So let me delete that again, or delete that so you can see it when I do it over here in the white area. I click on him to select him, and then I will come up here to offset, and notice it offset the box, because there's a invisible box around him, and that's not at all what we want offset. So I'm gonna delete that. So what we have to do is we have to use the trace tool. This is fabulous too. For those of you who have this, you know you love it. And for those of you who don't have it, you're gonna want it. Because go to the trace tool right here, looks like a piece of toast or a butterfly. Click on that, select the trace area. And now, oops, I gotta move him over some. That's gonna mess up. Let me get rid of that, okay. So I'm gonna select the trace area. So that just means I'm gonna draw a box around him because I wanna trace all of him. Now, sometimes if you're making an SVG, you want to just click on Trace because then that allows you to color all the different pieces. So for example, if I was doing this turtle over here and I wanted to make him out of heat transfer vinyl or vinyl, I might just want to trace him because then I'll be able to do each one of these colors individually and I'll show you that in a sec. But what we're going to do is we're doing print then cut. So rather than saying trace right here. I'm going to say trace and detach. So that now gives me my perfect little whatever he is and I can grab this part that's left and delete it. And now check this out. I'm going to click on him. Now watch what happens when I try to put a nice offset around him. Now I'm going to tell you this. I do not want my offset to go in like this all the time. Because I'm thinking of, if a little kid's playing with these, you know, they might have a tendency to tear them or something like that. So I'm going to try to make it so my offset goes pretty much around the whole thing. So I'm going to come over here and click on him. And then the offset, it's a hedgehog. Okay, thanks. It is? Okay. All right. Thanks, Tammy. I'm going to come over here and click on the offset panel, which is this star with an offset on it. And then I'm just going to click on the word offset. Okay, did you see that? That put an offset around him, and actually it put a pretty darn good, nice offset around him. Look, it's not going way in here in each of these little, whatever these things are. If I made the offset smaller, however, look what's happening. Let me scroll in. If I make the offset smaller, look what's gonna happen. When my machine, and I can actually change the color of the offset to white, because that's what I'll do. But when my machine, whether it's my Cricut machine or my Cameo, it's going to cut along here and go way in there. Look at this, way in there, way in there. That's not really what I want. So I'm going to hit the undo, or maybe I'll just take that offset and delete it. Delete, and we'll start again. So I'm going to click on him, and I'm going to say offset. And as I said, that came in as a pretty nice offset, because look, when I change that offset's color to white by coming up here, that's pretty good, look. It's just gonna cut just like that. No big, big, big indentations. So I think that's gonna work pretty good. So the only thing I have to do with this guy now is grab both things and right click and group. Now, as I said, I wanted the largest part of him to be three inches. So now that I put an offset around him, it's no longer three inches, it's, it's 3.235. So if I wanna stick with what I was saying I'm doing, I'll go ahead and lock this lock up here again, and I'll change the largest dimension, which is the width right now, to 3, and hit Enter. And since the lock is locked, you'll see that the height will change as well. Okay. So the hedgehog is done. Bring him back over here. So let's work on the turtle for a minute. First thing I'm going to show you is the way that you could trace him so that you could make him into an SVG if you want to use vinyl or heat transfer vinyl or even cardstock. So what you do is click on him and then you'll come over here to the trace tool. Let me get rid of the offset panel. Come to the trace panel, select the trace area, and then come over and just draw a box around him. Okay, now if we're doing this as a print and cut, we're gonna do trace and detach. But I'm just going to show you how you do it if you want to do this for, hey, maybe your kid likes that a turtle a lot and you want to make him some turtle magnets and you want to make a shirt 
or some vinyl to put on a notebook that matches. So anyway, if I wanted to do that, I would just say trace. And then I have this part left over. So then I would be able to go ahead and change these colors individually. Um, don't know if I should go through that right now a lot. Uh, we'll change it first to a color I'm probably not going to use. All right, so let me tell you what I just did. Let me go back. Okay, we have him. I'm going to change this to a light color that we probably won't use. So I'll change it to a light pink. Then the next thing I would do for this is I would come up here to Object and release the compound path. And what that's going to allow me to do now is to color these little parts different colors. So I could change this one to purple, this one to blue, this one to orange. Whoops, I missed it. Orange. And this last one to whatever. Uh, oh, yellow. Okay. And then I could change his... Well... I won't be able to change his shell all by itself because it's connected. So this, I would have to teach you how to do this in our advanced classes that we have in Patreon. So Tammy, this is fairly easy, but let's just, if you could help me to remember to do this on Saturday to show people how in the world could you change just his shell color? Because I really want him to have a back, black backing, but I want his shell to be a different color. His legs I can easily change, but just his shell, no. I think I would probably want to work on the nodes or do a knife cut, but that's for another class. So let me get rid of this, delete this. This is a little bit more advanced for our Patreon classes. So let's go back to this guy. We're going to make him a print then cut. Let's get going so I can actually print and cut him and you can see how this turns out. So I'll come back over here to the trace panel select the trace area, trace it. Since he's going to be a print then cut, rather than saying just trace, I'm going to say trace and detach. Okay, then I'll move him out of here and you can barely see it, but there's an outline of him right here. I need to delete that, I don't need it. And now I just have him. And the reason why I did that was because I wanna add an offset to him. If I didn't trace him first, recall what happened with the hedgehog. It just made an offset of the box, the invisible box that was around him. Now I can make a nice offset around this guy. So to get the offset, I'll come way over here to the star, click on that, click on the word offset, and I'm looking to see how big this offset is around his neck, and I guess that's okay. Again, if we were doing this in... Um, Our Patreon classes, we might double click and get some nodes and maybe make this not be such a big space or a tiny little space right here. In case you're doing this for a young kid and you think they might accidentally be too rough with it when they're trying to get it off of something and tear it. But again, that's a little bit more advanced. What I could have done was, let me delete this offset. I could have made it bigger, but it would make it bigger all the way around. Let's check it out. Come back to the offset, offset. Remember before when I showed you how I can make the offset smaller by going here where it says distance, I can make the offset larger. So as I click on this, see how it's getting larger and larger? And I could do that if I wanted to. And it's making that area right here around his neck thicker and thicker, so it'd be less likely to tear or bend. But I don't think I really like it that big. So I'm going to go back to zero... 0.125 and just leave it like that the way it comes in automatically and now I'm going to change its color the offsets color to white and we really can't tell that it's white until I bring it over here over top of this gray area and I got to keep those together I just need to group them because I can move each one individually right now so I'll group them right click and group and now, as I said, I want to make this the largest dimension, three inches. So I'm just going to come up here, lock the lock, make the width three, hit enter. Okay, so he turns into a tiny little frog, I mean frog, <laughs> turtle. I could make him bigger if I want to now. It just depends on what I feel like. But, 
So right now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and send this to my printer and bring it over here to show you what it looks like. So I'm going to come up here to send. Oh, um, look at this right here. If you're using a Cameo, notice these red lines right here. That's going to cut anywhere there are red lines. Those are cut lines. So it's going to cut on the offset, but it's also going to cut right here. And I don't want that. Same with the turtle. Look at this. It's going to cut around his head, and then it's going to cut around the offset. So all I have to do to fix that is grab both of these. And rather than it saying cut right over here, I'm going to change it so it says cut edge. And then notice what it did. Just put this solid cut line around the outer edge of these guys, and that's what I want. So for my printer, I'll come up here to File, Print, Preferences. Uh, I'll leave it on High and Color. I, and I don't really need to see a print preview. I believe it's going to work just fine. So I'll say OK and Print. And notice that I don't have any of these parts going outside of the line, nor do I have, um, and I probably should have put more stuff on there, right? That was kind of silly of me, because I was thinking I could reuse that paper, but once it has those lines drawn on it, I'm not sure about that. Oh, well, anyway, it's just for our purposes here anyway. So it's printing over there. I'm going to run over there and get it. And I'll bring you back down here to my table. We'll put it on here. I'll cut it and you'll see how nicely they turn out. And look, my ink is low. Oh. All right, I heard it's done. I'll be right back. I was in a mild panic over there because I couldn't find this, but it was because of this, because it had fallen on the floor because I didn't have the tray pulled out. But look how nicely that turned out. Doesn't that, doesn't that look good? Okay, so now let's get down here and I'll put it on my mat. Hopefully my mat's sticky enough. Maybe I better spray it right quick like I said I was gonna do with a little bit of this stuff, the um, Sulky KK2000. Again, I want to make sure that I don't have these edges, and I really shouldn't be doing this by any of my machines because the spray, I'm going to close this for a second. The spray will go some other places, but let me just. Okay, there we go. Hopefully that's going to be good enough to make it stick right. I need to buy another mat. Okay, it feels pretty sticky, although I'm not lifting it quite up. I don't know. Let's hope. Keep your fingers crossed. So I'll put this on here. And I'll squeegee it down. I think I'll do it on the back. So as not to perhaps be too rough on these designs that have just been printed. So there it is. So what I'm doing is I'm put whoopsie. Sorry. I'm putting this in my cameo. I have the little dark solid square up in the upper left hand corner just like it was on my um, one that you see up here my virtual mat you see the little square in the upper left hand corner so it's the same way here now I'm going to put this in my cameo and hit the button okay let's check double check and see what my settings are up here so for this there is a setting for magnetic paper printable I also have it on auto cut, auto blade, cut the edge, and I believe on, from yesterday I did go up and change this to a 7 here. I used to call this an 8 because to me it looks more like an 8, but I guess there's a faint blue line on this 7, so this and it's in the middle, so the knife depth is 7. The force is 30, I didn't change that, and I did not change the speed. Not sure why it's on a one, but I'll just leave it like it is for now. Um, so let's hope that the stickiness holds it, and I'm going to hit send. 
Okay, it says it's registering, but you know what? Nothing's happening. <laughs> huh. Oh, there we go. Okay, it's reading the registration lines. And then it's going to click because I'm using the auto blade, so it will get clicked to where it needs to be. And then it's going to start cutting. Okay. So while that's cutting, I'll see if anybody had any questions. Don't think so. Okay, while that's cutting, I'll also show you these other ones that I had already done. And what I think is really cool about using the dry erase board is that if you have a kid who likes to draw, they could also draw like mountains or a tree for the bird or do a little story. I even thought for my little grandbabies, I might like to do something like make the three bears and Goldilocks, you know, little things like that. And they can actually tell the story and use their little, their little guys. So, okay, well, I don't think that moved. I think we're safe, so I'm going to try it out and take this off. Now, let's see how well this did. Perfect. Here you can see I'm just bringing the magnet right off. It's cut perfectly. And there these little guys are. Let's take them off. Look what happened! Did you see that, you guys? <laughs> i got to scroll in. I think I should have made his neck a little bit thicker. I pulled this off the sticky mat that's really, really, really sticky because I used too much of that stuff. See how sticky it is? I can just pick it up. I decapitated the turtle. <laughs> oh my gosh. Look. That poor turtle, turtle, tortoise. So what it is is because of that sticky stuff that I used probably, the Sulky KK2000. You gotta be careful on how much you use of this because stuff will stick to this like crazy and then tear. Because I didn't really think that was gonna be that fragile right there. So there's a, look at that. Are you, you guys need to catch up with me. <laughs> I gotta watch and see which, when you guys see this. He turned out beautifully. No problems with him, he's great but my poor little turtle. So I'll put him on here. Oh my gosh, let me scroll back out. Oops, back out. Did you see? Oh my God. <laughs> yes, it did. I'm typing. <laughs> poor guy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Anyways, you get the idea. So here's the thing. This printable magnet stuff is fairly thin. I did not think this would happen, but I really believe it's because I may have put too much of the Sulky Sulky t K2000. Um, and it was really too sticky, like it's still sticky. So I just ripped that right off. I wish I had done him earlier and I would have known to be careful with that. But anyway, so that's pretty much it and that's what happens when you're doing live I guess oh. but I think they're super cute you know the rest of them are really pretty sturdy I mean I'm not having I don't know I was really shocked that happened oh yo yo yes poor little man shucks I missed everything so far didn't know you were back on oh yeah can I see that? You sure can see that, can. Yes, this is what I use. It's expensive stuff. You can also use, where is the, my video? There we go. You can also use just like quilting spray, quilt basting spray. That's probably a lot less expensive than this stuff. I have this from when I used to work at a quilt shop. Lasts forever. It's really strong though, as you could see. Temporary spray adhesive. 
Wait till I tell my friend Rachel that I used to work with. She'll die. <laughs> Dora wants to see the can of spray. Yeah. Bonnie, with the magnetic sheets, I use the blue painter's tape on an older mat. Okay. Yeah, I shouldn't have done that. I mean, this, this stuff just must be too strong, right? Maximum coverage. Oh, well, anyway, I did use it yesterday, and obviously I didn't lose anything, but look what I did with his tail yesterday. You see that? I didn't want a little skinny tail there, so I did fill it all the way in like that, and I used the nodes on this. If I hadn't used the nodes, all of this white offset would have been huge, but I didn't want it that big. I just wanted this part right here to not be single. Okay, so like I did the same thing with this guy, see? I did not want the cuts to be up here because I was afraid that might happen. So this is the brand I have, like I said, Avery. That's what I use. I had another brand here and I didn't get a chance to try it yet. I don't know if it's any thicker. I also have, and this is really old, a Xerox brand. But this is this is glossy water resistant. So maybe this is stronger. I just didn't know what the glossy would look like. But it feels like it could be a little stronger. I'll try this and let you guys know. Or maybe I could just throw it in there right now. How about I go do that? Be right back. If you need to leave, okay, but if not, hang on. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing again. So, if you look up here, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna send this one now. Do I dare? No, no, I can't send it yet, stop. Oh, I have to print it first. File, print, print, I know it is. Okay, I'm gonna print this first and then I'll uh, try cutting this one and see if it's what it ends up being like. So it's over there printing. So, so far we did the Avery and that one made my little turtle get killed. And now I'm trying the Xerox brand. This, and like I said, this I've had for a million years. I don't even know if they sell this brand anymore, but they probably have one similar to it. So I'll go over and get that because it's done. Okay, so that finished, and this is what it looks like cut. I mean, not cut, but printed. So I guess I'll try that same mat. Whoa! And this, okay, this one feels heavier, sturdier. So let me see what happens when I use this. I hope you're going to stick to this. Get down like this. Use a squeegee again. We it on and put it in here. Now this is a different material, so I'm not sure what, and I can see it's coming off up there. But what I really should do first, you guys, something that I'm always saying I do, I should do a test cut first since this is a different one. So I'm gonna click right here on the word test and see how well this works. So what it will do is it's going to do just a little tiny test. That's what it's doing. It's doing the test right now. So I can see if these settings are good enough for this a little bit thicker seeming uh, magnetic paper. So the test is finished. I can take it out and let me see if it's cut. So there we go. Okay, no, look, it did not cut. Well, it did but I think I could use the blade to be a little bit deeper because it's not a, all the way totally through. Or, like Tammy likes to do, I could add more pressure. 
So I'm just going to go up here. All right, so now I added some more stuff, so we'll see what happens this time. So if I wanted to test this again before I went ahead and um, cut this, what I would do is this. Come up here, get ready to say test. But before I do that, sorry, I'm jerking you around here. We're going to come back down to my machine here. I'm going to feed this in. See what, how it's not sticking? Come out. I'm going to put a little of this. No, I better not. I should use some tape. Of course, I don't know where there is any right offhand. All right, I'll just use a little bit of scotch tape for right now. I'm going to be safe. Okay, so I'm going to put this back in here. And then if I'm going to retest it, put it in. All I do is, if you can see these buttons, let's see if you can see. What can you see? I don't think I can make you see it. Yeah, these right here. I'm gonna manipulate these over where I want the new test cut to be. So right there, I'll have the new test cut be right there. So I'm going to come back up here and say test, and we'll see how well it does. Okay, and I'm going to pop it out, so let's let you see. Here we go. I'm going to pop this one out now and see if this cut better. Should use a weeding tool probably. So that cut pretty well. And again, though, the triangle in the middle isn't that great. Let me tr I'm not going to try anymore. I think I know what I'm going to switch it to. So I'm just going to go like this, put it in there. Maybe switch this one more time. There. Okay, and I'm just gonna send it and see what happens. So I'm clicking on send. So it's gonna read the registration lines, hopefully. If it fails to read the registration lines, which it may do right now because of those cuts I'd already made, let me show you. If you look up here, you'll see that it does say registration failed. So what I sometimes do when that happens is I change it to manual. And notice when you say manual, well, it says right here, to try manually, use those same little arrows I used before to position tool number one above the black square and then click register. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to use those, those arrows and put tool number one above the black square and then I'm going to click register again over here and see if it will do it for me this time. Okay, so there we go. And now it's registering because I was able to do it manually just like that. Okay, so now it's going to cut. And I am going to be more careful with the little turtle's head. <laughs> Make sure it doesn't pop off. Yeah, I agree, Bonnie. I think they're cute, cute little animals, too. So, Bonnie, when you use the magnetic sheets, you use blue painter's tape just on the edges of it to hold it on your mat. And again, it's on a speed of one, which is very slow. But that's the speed that the cameo or the silhouette automatically picked for it. All right, let's hope that this cut through now, because 
I'm not positive. Let's see. Well, all right, we got to, no. Yeah, it's working pretty well. I guess I just have to kind of pop on it a little bit because it's a little bit thick. But it appears to be working good. Well, oh dear, I'm getting close to you know who. Okay, that turned out beautifully, and I actually like the shine of it. Let's see, here's the other one. I don't know, which one do you guys like better? Let's see if you can see them both. I don't know if you can tell any difference here. This one definitely feels more substantial than this one. So I might like the glossy better. But let's see if I can avoid ripping off his neck. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I need to do this privately so y'all don't see it if it happens again. <laughs> Almost done. Come on, little turtle boy. Yay! Oh, wait. It was the problem was taking him off the mat, wasn't it? There we go. Okay. So there's that guy, too, and he turned out just cute. Okay. So there's another type. So you can look at the different kind of magnetic uh, materials that you can find and see what you like, the glossy or the non-glossy. This one, feel, the glossy, feels a little bit more substantial. But, they're, but they both worked well, other than me ripping off the turtle's head. I'm not going to move him. Maybe I'll move him over. Alright. So again, as I said, it's kind of fun to use a magnetic or a dry erase board because the kids could draw something on here or even write the names of the animals or whatever they'd like to do just to make it a little bit more fun. So that's it. And again, you would do the same thing if you were making stickers. Just add a little offset like that to them and put them on sticker, do it uh, printed on sticker paper. Let's see, Bonnie says, I cut the tape in half to make it narrower since you can't find one half inch tape. Oh, okay. Yeah, along the sides and the bottom. Okay. Yeah, you like the shine better, Tina? Okay, let's see. You're welcome, Dora. Okay, Avery. Tammy uses Avery for t shirts, too. Just reading a few of these. Let's see. His head. <laughs> Just looking back a little bit. Okay. Yay. All right, so that pretty much is it. That turned out really well. I love these things. I think my little grandbabies will like them too. I'm going to get rid of him. He's making me sad. There, he's gone. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? If not, I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, make sure if you're in Patreon that you check uh, the, the thing that I put in our silhouette group and also check in Patreon because I have some new information about our um, getaway, our waterless cruise <laughs> that's coming up in October. And I hope a lot of you will be able to join me and Tammy and I know a few others that are coming. Yeah, wish, wish Stephanie and Tracy could come. But beings how y'all live across the ocean, far, far away. But it's going to be a lot of fun. So does anybody have any questions? So again, you could do the same thing using this software and just send this to your Cricut machine. And the beauty of it is you will have a nice offset around the stuff. So, for example, on the, if you had done the turtle and you didn't have an offset or put an offset around him at all, his little neck would really be a lot skinnier yet. And probably if I were to redo him, I might make his offset a little bit larger just to make it a little bit more sturdy. I'm, these are for three-year-olds, so I'm thinking sturdy is good. And again, you know, make sure that you don't have his little tail being just a little skinny tail. 
But I can see this, like I said, even for kids in middle school or whatever, you know, putting stuff, putting little stickers on their, not stickers, but magnets on their lockers, decorating them with words or maybe the name of their school's team or something like that. Or if they're cheerleaders, something about cheering. Anyway, I guess that's it. Uh, thanks a lot for trying to find me. Goodness, that was a pain in my neck. And I'm sure it was a pain in your neck as well, trying to scurry around and see. What was that? Where's Waldo? Where's Patty Ann? <laughs> you know? Anyway. Yeah, he's all in one piece. Love those little guys. Me too. All right. Thanks again for joining me. And I'll see you again soon. See you guys, Patreon guys, on Saturday morning. Don't forget, hey, if you're new to Patreon and um, you didn't read of... Uh, or maybe I didn't write it the last time. The class starts at 10 a.m., but right around 9.30-ish is when the doors of the classroom open because that's when we all get in there and talk and gab and laugh and just have a good old time. Then at 10 o'clock is when the class starts. So feel free to come early. A whole bunch of us are always there early chatting. So see you guys again. Bye.